Hello everyone, Zach here from Porchester Railworks and today we'll be doing another review on a 00 gauge locomotive. So you may be able to see in the background but I'll bring out a shot now. Here she comes now. Sorry for the noise in the background. I do apologise. The loco that we'll be taking a look at is this. The Bachmann 9400 pannier tank with sound. And it's just cut out. That's awkward. Okay. Anyway, so I bought this loco for about £200. The RRP is 230 I got it on the cheap from a retailer, brand new as well. So I'm really satisfied with the way that turned out. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm really impressed with the way this loco looks. Like, I'll tell you what, we'll have a closer look at her so you can see what I mean for yourself. So starting off at the front of the loco, we can see some lovely details. So the first notable feature is we've got fitted brake pipes. The chimney here has been given a proper shiny finish compared to Hornby's sort of matte finish, I guess. But yeah, it's got a real shine to it and looks properly metallic, which is a really, really lovely feature. We can see separately, if I move around to the side here, separately applied handrails, riveting detailing. We've also, I really do apologise for this noise, we have sprung buffers as well. Yeah, I really like Backman sprung buffers because they're black instead of, you know, that silver, which is really annoying that Hornby include. I don't know if they probably do sprung buffers, but I'd assume that theirs are also this matte black. So, you know, they look, look a little bit better, I guess. So, moving along the side of the loco, we can see lots of detailing, including rails. Just the, You can see the inside mechanism there. There's also a builder plate which is a really, really nice feature. Yeah, it's a really, really good looking engine. We can see sandbox, all the other mechanism features at the side here. These aren't etched number plates, they are included, but I haven't decided to fit them. But, oh well. We can see all the ladders and that. The cab looks fantastic and a fun little feature, a firebox glow. This is just a lovely feature and really enhances any locomotive, I think. I'll display the rest of the functions later because, um, yeah, I can. Anyway, so moving around the loco, we can see brake pipe at the back, all the detail there. From the back, you'd assume this is a large tank engine, but then you just see, whoop, no, it's a pannier. So yeah, anyway, I really like the way this engine looks, it's a real nifty looker. The other side isn't much different. So yeah, looks really, really good though. Um, we've got on the top, as I said, we've got a shiny chimney, which just looks lovely. We've got water caps, even the hooks are there. The safety valve's got the valving inside. A separately applied whistle. This isn't moulded, which is just phenomenal from Backman. We've also got glazed windows. None, none at the back, which is a bit annoying, but I still think it looks really, really nice. So on the inside, of course now it starts to get loud, but if she'll focus for me. Yeah. We can see all the detailings there, the reverser, just everything's there. Literally, this loco hasn't missed a single detail to the real life loco. It really is fantastic. One thing to mention, the quality as well is just incredible on this. It's built beautifully. On, upon closer inspection, I haven't noticed a single glue mark on this which is just phenomenal. We also have not a lot of die cast features. We've just got bog standards, a few die cast features. The main die cast notable features are 
running plate. As I said, way to tell this is if it's cold to the touch. If it's cold, then you know it's die cast. And this is ice cold. Also, features fitted at the back here are die cast as well, which is a really nice feature. I'm not talking about the leather, I'm talking about these little handles on here. Those are all metal as well. The window bars, I believe, are plastic, yep. No worries. So, yeah, like, this Loco, as I said, build quality for me, a solid 9 out of 10. It just looks the part, to be fair to it. It really, really is a beautiful engine. So now let's just, you know, find out a little bit about the real-life Locos themselves. So, the 9400 Pannier tanks were a class of 060 PT tank engines designed by the Great Western Railway and were the final locomotives built under Big Four and Great Western ownership. Ten were built at Swindon Works, being the GWR variety, the rest being built at Stevenson and Hawthorne's Bagnall and the Yorkshire Engine Company. The first being built in 1947, the final in 1956. In total, there were 210 of the class built. The engines were the final of the pannier tank legacy. Very different, much larger, having bell pair fireboxes too, looking very, very different from their smaller pannier tank counterparts. The first withdrawal came in 1959, only three years after the, after the final of the class was finished. The final came in 1965. The engines had an 18 year work span, which is just shocking really and quite wasteful. Two have been preserved, number 9400 and 9466. However, the remaining 208 were unfortunately scrapped. So here she is out on the track. The beautiful Backman Pannier. Just wow. These really are phenomenal locos. Now, how does she perform? Right. How will she crawl? This is one out of 28. Cut out, never a good sign. My track is dirty, so bear in mind. I don't know if you can tell, but it is horrendously jolty. That is an awful crawl, look at it. Yeah, you can see in the short intervals that it's just a horrendous crawler, really. Honestly. That's just not good, and this is a shunting locomotive, bear in mind. The Loco has a variety of functions, of course, including it, including a series of whistles. Oh, wrong one. Sorry. Including a series of whistles. Only hit that twice but as we've seen earlier it also has a firebox which you might be able to see begin glowing no now to be honest I know it's a bit nitpicky but it's a bit red for my liking it doesn't really look like a fire Hornby's firebox is much better but it's a justifiable feature to bring it up to a 200 RRP including the sound there are a large variety of other sorts of um, like effects, I guess. And um, yeah, to be fair, it's not bad, I will admit. It's nice. Lots of different features, but there's a lot to be desired, to be frank. Sorry about that in the background once again. But anyway, you can also change the intensity of the puffing, and it also has a shunting mode, which I will. That's the firebox glow going off. Which I'll now demonstrate now. So if you were to press shift and then 19 or F9, whatever, then it has a shunting mode. Now this is full speed with shunting mode engaged. Oh, crikey. Right, let's stick her in reverse because then I'm not knocking anything over. So let's just bring her to a stop before she shoots off. Yeah, her shunting mode is much more useful at closer speeds, I guess. Come on. Come on. Yeah, the braking is realistic, but it's kind of annoying. So let's bring her back here. 
Now, the main useful thing for shunting mode is, especially when you're buffering up to something, as I'll demonstrate now, I have, stand I have shunting mode on standby, she's currently doing half speed as she comes back into shot. Now, right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit shunting mode now. You can see that is a drastic slowdown all of a sudden. So yeah. This loco is unbelievable. Yeah, performance wise she is not strong, but to be fair, my track is horrendous, but it's being overhauled in the next couple of weeks as construction on the layout begins. Mainly just the groundwork, but there you go. But yeah, I'll demonstrate the shunting mode in like its proper use, I guess. Backwards you go. Now this is five out of 28. Stop, come on. Right, let's stick in reverse. Okay. Um, I can't quite tell which way is reverse, actually. Come on. Stop yourself. Oh. Right. Okay, it's just tried moving off for some reason. Yeah, even I'm still coming to grips with this loco. It fascinates me. Oh, yeah, you've got a disengage shunting mode. And then... Come on. And then engage on to a whoa, 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 wrong way, wrong way. But yeah, so this is shunting mode at a reduced speed, like what it would really be used for. This is seven, eight. Now, here you can see that slow speed, it's not the best to be honest. And you can also see yellow flickers, that's actually um, the firebox just sort of doing its thing. Now, one thing I should talk about whilst the loco is just going up the test track to fetch its train is the fact that it's got a, well, it's got probably what I can only describe as a cheap and horrendous mechanism, frankly. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this, to be honest with you. Basically, the reason being is that it's sloppy, it's a coreless motor, which is frankly horrendous. Now, if you don't know what coreless motors are, they're just absolutely terrible things. The loco is about to buffer up, so this slow speed is very useful for like coupling up and such. Like, obviously when you're buffering up things, you don't really want to, you know, slam into coaches. Right, okay, now let's bring her on our way. Disengage shunting mode. And here she comes. Up, oh, she hasn't coupled up. How? How is it not coupled up? Did I just not couple up? Right, I should have definitely got it that time. Yep, we've got it. That's much more like it. Oh, no I don't. Right, okay, um, two seconds. Let's sort this out. Okay, whatever was going on there, it's all sorted now, so let's try again. Oh, that's the high one. Okay, let's do a two-tone. That was cool. I like that. Right, let's bring her around, and I'll show you what she's hauling. And at the same time, we'll also bring around her running partner. Right, let's start her running partner up. So we'll just let her running partner whiz past as the pannier comes around. It's the county class. Nice GWR low coast fits into the theme. So both of the locos have just got a casual rake of GWR. Well, the Pannier's got Mark 1s to sort of fit in with BR accuracy, but the County's got two GWRs and a Mark 1. So I hope you enjoyed this little running session. Yeah, when the loco gets up to speed, it's much smoother runner, as you'll now see. So the loco's just coming around. Now, as I said, speed, at, as, as you can see here, when she's doing an alright speed, she is a way smoother runner. But the one reason I just don't like about this loco is that it's got a coreless motor, as I said, which are just really awful mechanisms that aren't that great. So at slower speeds, she's not that great, which for a shunter is not good news at all.
with the county, of course, we've seen her before. Yeah, really lovely runner. I do like her. A railroad loco, but nice enough, nice enough the last, definitely. So as the loco is coming around, we can actually see another GWR loco. It's a castle class in the background here. What would you guys reckon if I was to do a running, if I was to do a um, review on her next? Of course, there's a few more locos that I do want to review in my fleet. So um, yeah, it will just come down to what I really choose eventually. But I'll quickly show you what may be to come. We could have ourselves a lovely B12. Castle, or if it takes your fancy, an A3 Pacific. So whilst the two locos are just beginning their final lap, I'll just um, sort of slightly out true. Anyway, um, yeah. So, my thoughts on this loco. I've seen better, definitely. But to be fair, in terms of looks, it's phenomenal. In terms of performance, there's a lot to be desired. Let's bring it out to shunting mode and just start easing off the throttle. She could well. Yeah, you can hear brakes squealing there. Oh, will she? just overshooting anyway but yeah honest review on this loco as I've said lots to be desired especially in terms of her slow speed and for a shunting loco that's just not on a coreless motor is frankly not the best option and it does as I says leave a lot to be improved definitely but overall would I say it's worth the 229 pound RRP no Definitely not. If it was around 180 to 200, I could definitely agree with it. But 230 pounds is just a bit crazy, isn't it, Backman? <sighs> Honestly. But yeah, that's my honest thoughts on the Loco. It's not the best runner, definitely. And yeah, as I said, if I just start her off, look. This is one speed, two speed. Her slow speed just isn't that impressive, is it? You can just see jerks. Overall, it's just not that great. Now, in terms of the sound decoder, actually, I don't know where it's from. It might be authentic, it might not. Anyway, but enough about that. You know, you could research it, I could, whatever. Anyway, but yeah, so that's my honest opinion on the Backman 9400 Pannier Tank. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you've liked what you've seen, then please make sure to subscribe, share around, check my Instagram account. There is a link in the description to it where you can see like photography, all sorts, maybe some layout updates if I don't post them on here. But yeah, all sorts, definitely. So with that, I thank you all for watching once again and bye for now, everybody.